Hello everyone, Dana Williams here, your soul mission mentor and artist of change. It's Friday once again and um, this week we're going to do uh, a little refresher course on how to release uh, stuck energy and understand the blocks and how they have organized themselves. So um, a lot of you have already emailed me since that newsletter that I put out on Tuesday. And thank you so much for um, giving me a little uh, heads up on some of your issues. Um, some of you were saying that, you know, you have anxiety all the time and you've had it all your life. Um, others are saying that you have anxiety when it's time to be big in the world and follow through with yourself. Some of you um, talked about how you're afraid to hurt other people's feelings if you're, um, if you're doing something for them and you do it wrong. A lot of, you know, a lot of these emails that I received, basically we can, we can put them all together in, um, under the, the foundation of this is undigestible, it's not my energy, it's the story that was created from the creation story in childhood. And a lot of us adults are walking around now with anxiety and um, you know, anxiety from getting it right, judgment, performance anxiety, and there's all these secondary gains that um, are keeping us stuck. Okay, so, you know, I've got my little orphans here. Let's say um, this, is, this is one of my orphan parts that believes she's not good enough and she's never going to get it right. Well, that is going to show up in the form of anxiety and fear when it's time for you to be witnessed in the world. And so this isn't the enemy. She's not the, the grim reaper messenger to take you out, you know, by the gut. You know, your gut instincts kick in and then you feel this pain, or this anxiety, this fear. Um, it might feel like the enemy, but it's just the messenger. We don't want to shoot the messenger, okay? So um, let's look, and, and I love referring to my, uh, for, I will forever refer to this drawing. This was done by Christine Much, my dear friend, and I'm so grateful to have it. So think about it. When you guys, when you get triggered by something in your outer world or a thought about something that you need to do that you're afraid of, I want you to go and scan the round table. <laughs> go and find out how old are you and what's the story? Because that will be the creation story that ended up making it an identity out of that part. And that part only knows that one story. So think of it like this. Um, it's not about what happened to me. It's about what I made that mean about me. So it could be a small T trauma. It doesn't have to be a capital T trauma. You know, we're so innocent, you know, when we're little children and we, we follow orders from the way that, you know, our parents ran their, wor their world, their anxiety, their rage, raging, you know, um, emotions maybe didn't didn't know what to do with them it all affects us as children so there there's there's there could be many many orphans in this broken hearted part the biggest mistake that we make is because there's so much pain we figure out a way to block having to check in with this and if i'm making decisions based on protecting myself from fear, from activating these, you know, explosive um, anxiety triggers, I'll probably be creating 
everything up here. And that is going to have severe consequences to pretty much everything in your life. Uh, so the idea is we need to find out what is it that the head wants to do? What is it that the head wants to make a decision on? And then check in with your heart. Is there any disagreements in there? Is there any stories coming up in there? Is there any yeah buts coming up in there? And you might even feel like you're gutted because it's so scary to consult with this hidden part of yourself. This is the shadow, okay? Now, um, I'll just be faking being me if I don't even know who lives underneath these wounds. And it's going to be a full-time job. That's why the anxiety kicks in, because it, it's a lie. It's not even who you are. So um, when you think about this picture here, and you think about this picture here, the next one that I want you to think about is this. This is kind of what it feels like to me when I'm working with an anxiety issue. So I get it. I get how every cell in your body is, is being activated and animated in that pain and fear. This is what I call phantom pain. So whatever happened in those brokenhearted stories and what lives below the belt, that phantom pain is it's gonna it's gonna have neuropathy. It's gonna, you know, it's still gonna feel the pain of that story like it's happening now, like it's a current event. And the reason it feels like a current event is because your subconscious doesn't know the difference between then, now, and the future. So that's pretty, pretty big. Uh, that's a lot of territory to have to manage if you're doing it from just the penthouse. Okay, we gotta, we gotta walk through all the departments of ourselves. Now, um, often what we do is we feel this incredible um, palpable fear. It feels like it's the enemy. And then we go outside of ourselves <clears throat> to our outer world to try and tune up whatever it is that's triggering us. But what we really need to do is we need to go in here and we need to find out what that story is. And when we find out what the story is, we can, if that's the right way it goes, we can <clears throat> reparent. We're making a love sandwich statement. So there, it's kind of like parenthesis. And our little orphan part, whoever he or she is, is living inside the parenthesis, okay? Now, we want, we want to make friends with that. We're actually bridging over. We're creating a bridge from this younger part to the wise adult, and eventually there will be a homecoming. And, and this part will start to feel, oh, okay, somebody's got my back. And I really, really love the power of EFT to get in rapport with that part. So if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and get a copy of this from my website, danalouisewilliams.com. And um, I do have one more drawing here I wanted to show you. It's a new one that just came in last week. What did I do with it? This is like my, 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 I'm like a mad scientist in my laboratory here with all my, all my little drawings. I'm going to hit pause and I'm going to go find it. Hang on. 
Okay, here it is. Okay. Think of yourself like a temple. This house is like you, okay? You're a sacred temple, and here's all the orphans outside the house. They want to come in, but there's like this force field that's blocking them from coming, coming home. And so they're always chirping up and trying to get, oh, look at these little guys over here. They get, they get their hands in the air and they're just like, please. And up here are the, the hearts. The hearts are unaccessible. They cannot come into the house. We've got to bring all the orphans back home we got to be congruent with our head, our heart, and our gut, and then the love can come in. So, you know, when you feel these little, little orphans kicking you in the shins, they're not the enemy. They are the messenger. And there's two root words in the word messenger. There's mess, or not messenger, it's mess, message. There's mess, and there's sage, okay? So... You know, here's the mess. She's the messenger showing you the mess where you are trying to digest what's not yours. And here's the sage. But we got to get those antennas down inside your bubble where you can tr truth track yourself and find out what you're going to keep and what you're going to let go of. So, um, I hope this has been helpful, and um, I'm just uh, gathering up all my little orphans now, and we're all going to say goodbye, and we will see you next Friday in your inbox. And if you feel like you want a little hand with getting things tidied up and do some healing work with me, I am very happy to um, include you in, with my VIP clients. And we can roll our sleeves up and get some, get some good shifts happening for you. Okay, so we'll see you next week in your inbox. Bye for now.